Right, let's get to those major developments on the future of Chelsea now. And it's understood there have been several serious bids of around £3 billion to purchase the club. Yeah, Roman Abramovich announced he was putting Chelsea up for sale on Wednesday. It appeared that things were moving very quickly. Early this week, the Swiss billionaire Hans-Jörg Weiss on the left of the picture here announced he was considering making an offer for the club, though he claimed Abramovich wanted too much money. He suggested that his intentions would be clear by the end of the week and that he'd need to put together a consortium. Well, USA businessman Todd Bowley has emerged as the first major partner of that group, but one of the richest men in Britain has denied he's got any interest. Sir Jim Ratcliffe was reportedly one of the interested parties, but a spokesperson insists there is no substance to the claims and that he is fully focused on his sporting portfolio, which includes French club Nice and the Ineos cycling team. There are a number of bids for Chelsea already in registered with Roman Abramovich. Um, talk of the sort of £3 billion mark, we're not sure on the exact veracity of that. Um, I'm led to believe that Roman Abramovich has not set a specific asking price. You'd be a little bit surprised if he could get sort of three upwards maybe. There have been suggestions of £4 billion too. Um, so I think it's at a really delicate stage. It doesn't sound like he's going to rush it despite the threat of potential sanctions, which as far as we know have not come to Roman Abramovich so far. And the word coming out from his end is that he feels this is the right time to sell Chelsea. Well, Abramovich putting Chelsea up for sale comes as he faces increasing calls to be sanctioned due to his status as one of the wealthiest people in Russia and reported links to Vladimir Putin. Premier League Chief Executive Richard Masters revealed any sale of the club is likely to fall through if any action is taken against Abramovich, but says it is possible for a potential deal to be completed in a matter of days. I think the situation has escalated incredibly quickly over the last seven days. I think he's come to the right conclusion. It's sort of unsustainable in the current environment. Um, so it's a welcome decision and obviously for the sake of everybody, including the fans, the sooner the, the sell process concludes and and completes, um, the sooner everyone will have certainty. Well, as Masters welcomes Bramvich's decision to sell, Newcastle United co-owner Amanda Staveley has expressed some sympathy, saying uh, it's sad that Abramovich is having his club taken away from him. Staveley, of course, helped broker the much-criticised Saudi-backed takeover at St James's Park and claims the country's public investment fund also looked at trying to buy Chelsea. Well, the one great thing about taking four years to buy Newcastle is we have the great opportunity to look at every club, uh, uh, including Chelsea. And Chelsea is a wonderful club uh, and, I, and I enjoyed working with um, all, all the Chelsea colleagues on the Premier League board. Um, but no, we, we were, there was only one club for us, there will only ever be one club for us. Uh, and we, we like the challenge of trying to buy something at the 20th position in the league and try and put it to the top. We're always going to have geopolitical issues. This world is never going to not have problems, Tariq, and I know it's really hard. And I'm really sad today that someone is going to have a football club taken away because of a relationship they may have with someone. I don't think that's particularly fair, actually, to be honest. Um, but I also think that we have, to be, we have to hold all of our relationships to account. Well, Amnesty International have called on the Premier League to look at changing its owners and directors test and believe that this prospective sale of Chelsea would be the ideal time. The Premier League has a clear and immediate moral responsibility to change its ownership rules and to strengthen that owners and directors test and to put a stop to top flight English football being used as a PR vehicle for those complicit in serious human rights violations. I mean, the writing's on the wall. We've seen what's happened here. So yeah, this is a, real, a really prime opportunity for them to act.